My name's Julie and I'm 22 now. Um, I live in London with my two children and my boyfriend. In one of its main areas, children and talents, the UBS Optimus Foundation is going against a social taboo in actively supporting projects aimed at protecting children from violence and sexual abuse. This is a widespread problem all over Europe, found in all social classes and all age groups. Studies show shocking statistics. One in four girls and one in 10 boys have been sexually abused at least once by the time they reach the age of 16. There are thousands of children and young people who are trying to escape from violence and sexual abuse in dire need of assistance. Often, their way out is running away from home. We would like to thank Julie for her courage in telling us the story of her childhood. My mother died when I was um, six years old, and after that, things got very, very bad for me. I can't remember when the sexual abuse started, but I always felt that it was wrong. It didn't... It always felt horrible. I didn't know any different until, until I was about seven or eight years old when I realised, you know, that on staying at other people's houses, that this didn't happen to them, it was just me. I kept it a secret for a long, long time um, because, for, for many reasons, but, uh, you know, one of the reasons was that my dad threatened me a lot. Um, he made me completely uh, terrified of going into care. Uh, my father beat me with a belt buckle. Um, he, my left ankle um, was broken three times and my right ankle twice, where um, he'd stamp on them. Even, you know, I used to pray that somebody, anybody, would notice what was going on, just anybody, I didn't care who, and just take me away from it all. I mean, I tried to kill myself when I was how old was I? Nine years old was the first time I tried to kill myself. I went for a long time thinking that it must be something to do with me because I was singled out from my brothers and sisters. I thought it must be something to do with me. But when I held my first baby in my arms, I thought, no, nothing... I was a child like this once. No, no child on earth deserves what happened to me. And that helped me get over a lot of the problems that I had. Uh, finally, when I was about 14, um, I ran away from home and I lived rough in London for about six months before somebody told me about the refuge and um, I phoned them up and they took me in straight away. The UBS Optimus Foundation supports selected child protection centres in several European cities. One of them is Number 66, a refuge in London run by its partner organisation, the St Christopher's Fellowship. Each young person has a key worker who is a special member of staff that is there to coordinate their individual case, to work with all the other professionals, social worker, psychologist if there is one, school, doctors, and to be a special listening ear for each young person as well. But nine times out of ten maybe, abuse takes place within the family. So if you are a child and the adults who you trust most in your life, who are supposed to look after you and make sure you are safe, abuse that trust and harm you, to then trust any other adult, particularly strangers, again, would, well, is incredibly difficult, incredibly difficult. And a big part of our job is to try and rebuild that trust. An extremely wide range of services is offered by the child protection centres. These include a free child phone helpline, mobile advice centres for one-on-one -on -one or for family sessions, victim support legal advice, 
accommodation, help with homework and needs orientated leisure activities. Abused children face another enormous handicap. They're prone to truancy and exclusion from school. Therefore, the St. Christopher's Fellowship is working with the TCW, a specialist teaching organization. The Complete Works is a group of tutors and we are mostly drama tutors, drama teachers, drama practitioners. We are actors, we are directors, and we are mostly teachers or tutors of art forms. And we um, work with, presently, we work with children who are in care to help with the teaching and the learning, which is what parents do. When a child is either without a home because of whatever reason, war or small wars like domestic wars or large wars like world wars uh, and children who don't have homes have needs for continuing education whether they come from Blackpool or they come from Beirut it's it's the same process that they have to take up again and... in a child protection center services are available around the clock because of their traumatic experiences children are scared and don't feel safe Therefore, two members of staff are always available on a 24-hour basis. They ensure that at night, windows and doors are locked, security lights are on, and that they can always be reached by phone in case of urgent need. I think the reason that I'm still here today, that I'm, that I'm happy now, that I have children, that I have a home, and people that love me and that I love back is because of the refuge. I do credit the refuge with saving my life and I don't consider that to be an exaggeration at all. Eight hundred euros only will finance the educational support programme for one child for one year. <laughs> 